Okay, Case and Ingersoll fans, we're going to cover the Easy Adjust Clutch. Look at this. Easy Adjust Clutch Service Manual. Easy to find if you use Google. Any problem that you have, somebody else has already have had and they posted about it on fate on forums wherever google is always your friend answering questions to your problems so my suggestion is use google to seek answers instead of going on a forum and asking questions uh of course, you need to ask questions when you, you get the, the majority of your problem solved and maybe you don't understand part of it. But uh, for the most part, wisdom is found by seeking answers instead of answering quest ask asking questions. That's just my philosophy. That is how I have gotten to where I am. I did not have, uh, I did not have a Case Ingersoll person that taught me what I know, everything I know, I have learned by searching on Google and then doing it, plain and simple. Everything I want to know how to fix, whether it's my car, uh, anything, you, you can find it if you search right on Google and sometimes you just have to vary your searches. So that's my words of wisdom. So anyway, you, you always start when you're going to do your clutch with this. I still use it even though I've done at least 50 clutches. The main thing I use is the pitcher part, which shows you the order of assembly. This particular one is of a pitcher of a Kohler PTO shaft, but it doesn't matter because once you get to the the number three on there, once you get to three, everything beyond that is exactly the same. So it tells you there, and then on the other side of this, it it shows it tells you how many you're supposed to put of each thing. So anyway, what I do is. To make sure I'm getting everything correct, like I said, I can make mistakes as well and I'll still make sure I look at the pictures and did everything right. What I do is I take the picture part, get a little tater chip clip with a magnet, and that goes right on my shroud while I'm doing my job. So I've got a box full of the pieces. I'm going to bring those pieces out. So we're going to start out with the wavy washers. This clutch had been serviced, but uh, I had to do some stuff on it anyway, and uh, come to find out they did a couple things wrong. For one thing, when you put the screws into the friction disc, that's that number four and five. You can't do four and not five. If they broke, replace them. That's your lock washer. You have to have that. So make sure that that part's done. This clutch didn't have the lock washers on it, so that's kind of a scary thing because, you know, things heat up and cool down, and when they do that, they get loose. Bad things happen when things get loose. So here I've got several washers, wavy washers. Manual refers to the washers as being... Uh, Point fifty hundred or fifty hundredths thick, but anyway, when you have the pile, if you did have a pile, 
they're always the thin ones. There's thin, there's thick, thin and thick. They're always going to be the thin ones that go between the two washers. So you start out, you've got two washers, and you've got cottonwood fuzz, and then a skinny washer. That goes on. Get another two wavy washers. Generally, you can just replace these wavy washers, but these, I have new ones, and they were exactly the same shape. You know, like I said, someone rebuilt this clutch because uh, there was even a, a new shaft put on, a, a different type of weld, and actually even a new bolt was put on and welded in. So someone really serviced this clutch at, at one time. So here I got my two wavies and my thin washer. Two wavies, thin washer, thin washer, <laughs> missed it, there. Now the next section of the picture says friction disc pulley goes on. That's this. Uh, these bearings are good. One way you check bearings, see how that turns. It's turning smooth, but it doesn't spin. That's because the grease in there prevents them from freewheeling. If you get freewheeling while you do this, your bearings are dry and they make noise exactly the same as your deck spindle bearings would make noise. So it's a good idea to always replace these. I actually have some, and like I said, I can tell these are, are newer because they're different than what the OEM ones are. So the friction disc goes in and on. Uh, here's one check you can do. You want to make sure that everything moves nice on the shaft. This shaft has some wear on it, but it'll be operational. Um, they're pretty smooth ridges. There's no sharp ridges where your fingernail would stop. So I can still use it. Okay, after that, it shows I can either put two skinny washers on or the thick washer that you get. So we put the one fat washer on, and then we put a cam on. Same thing here. This bearing's newer than what the original are. And then, don't forget your fork. So now your fork would come in there. And it says... I want to make sure I say it right for the cams. Let me take the, this back out for a minute. So when you line these up, if the cams notches line up, that is wrong. And to change that, you would spin this. And now this cam notch is higher than the other cam notch. The reason is the cam notches aren't, uh, that one doesn't work very well. I'm trying to shed some more light on the subject here without it being like a spotlight. There we go. Now we can see the cam notches. So anyway, these aren't these notches are not centered. They're offset, and the uh, step seven says place rear cam on hub 
so that the notches faces out, face out in the front cam with the notches facing in, and then rotate cams, step eight, Rotate cams until the lever notches are misaligned as shown in figure one. The rear cam on the drive hub must be positioned so the shorter side is downward and the front cam must be shorter side upward. So that's just as I have it right now. Shorter side is down, front is up. So rear is down, front is up. So now we got to slide that back off put our forks on. This part is ready and then after you do that your big washer goes on. Now you get your adjuster nut. The adjuster nut goes this is your traveler nut, actually. I, I refer to it as the traveler nut. And uh, this is the adjuster nut. See how this protrudes? That needs to protrude in order for this washer to fit. And that washer... Wow, look at that. Someone put that together. See those marks? Someone tighten that with these things like this. They must have really struggled. The things you find. But anyway, that protrudes to, to catch this. And this traveler nut travels on the spindle here and positions the outer nut, which pushes on the washer. So it sets your adjustment. It's the outer part here that actually sets it, you know, as far as pushing on it, where the traveler nut would actually be recessed and not touching the washer. So we need to put this on. Find threads on these and so it makes the adjustment easier, pretty necessary. What you want to do is turn it until at least a little bit of this will stick out so that you can get these. So now in essence, now you've got these two cupped washers that face each other. This is the next thing on the list. These are lock washers. They lock. They need to be on here. And then there's the other parts. But anyway, this nut, when it's on with the stuff that's still to be put on, needs to be tightened against the traveler nut all the way, like as tight as you can tighten. That is what sets and keeps your adjustment. It's against this traveler nut, which is inside of this outer nut, with this nut and these being lock washers that need to be tightened until they don't tighten anymore. You do not use the outer nut, the front nut, for adjustment. If you're using the outer nut for adjustment, you're making a mistake and you won't, uh, won't keep your clutch in adjustment. So we've got those two that go on. This part goes on, and you need to make sure the right part's facing the lock washer. And then your fan goes on. Oh, 
I need to make sure it's the right way, which I didn't. And then your fan goes on. And then a, this is a nice thick washer, which you need to have. You notice that this nut is not a lock nut. If you have a lock nut, throw it out. It's not the right nut. So now you want to look, are your two lock washers lined up? My two lock washers are lined up. So now I've got everything bolted on. And what I'm doing right here is that this is making sure that I'm in the full off position. When, it, when you pull the lever, that's the on position. Almost. It has to cam over. See where this is lined up still? That's, that's the first resistance you feel. The second resistance you feel when you move the lever is the cam over position. You know, and it's not doing it right now because they're too far apart. So now that I've got it that far, we got Big Bertha. That's a big wrench I bought for this nut. And then I had to thin it down so it would uh, not push on the fan blades as much. Yeah, well, that's the only thing I used the wrench for, so I didn't mind thinning it down. But anyway, as I'm tightening that front nut, it's collapsing this, and it's going to actually be pushing on that. Hopefully, I forgot something that checking, making sure that this first washer you put on next to the cam has to be uh, lined up with that. It does appear that it is. Usually stays there. So you notice I'm tightening the front nut and I haven't done anything with that big adjuster nut. Because I can't even adjust this now I got to use it until I fully tighten it is where I start. She's fully tight now. And now I can actually check my adjustment. I do it like the old bearings where right now it's too big. You know, everything's flopping around there. So what I do is, now that it's tight, I can um, start my adjustment process. So obviously the big nut needs to go in. So I just hold the front nut where it is. And then give it a few turns. Which of course now it's not tight. But now... You have to keep it tight because that pushes on that outer part. This this whole outer part here gets pushed on by the lock washers and it pushes against the washer, which pushes against the cams, which pushes against the, the pulley and then friction disc. So now I'm tight again. Got to make sure the lever's all the way forward. So now it's touching. This is the way you do old old uh, tapered bearings. You make sure you get it tight enough to where you tightened it until it wouldn't turn very well. So what I do now is I actually recycle the handle once. Even twice. Because sometimes you just got to move everything on the pulley and see if it's still... Well, I almost got it. It's barely touching. So 
So I'm going to back off the front one. About, that was a big quarter turn. And now I'm going to tighten the big nut back to the front nut while holding it. Now they're tight. That's free. I'm going to cycle the lever and see if I went too far. Kind of feels like I did. So that's how little, since you just saw me do it, that's how little the range is. Yep, a little bit too much. So now to fix that, I need to just give, I hold the front nut now, turn the big nut, and then hold the big nut, tighten the front nut, but you always are a quarter turn, no more than a quarter turn from tightening the front nut and the traveler nut together when you're doing the adjustment. And there you go. I'm happy with that. That'll rub a little bit, but this is a brand new friction disc that hasn't seen any use hardly. There's, there was hardly any, any mark on the friction plate. So that's how you do it. Key thing I want you to remember, lock washer, nut and nut. These two nuts have to be tightened to each other to set the position. And you saw how I assembled it where I, I hand tightened this until the traveler, which is hidden in here, was barely sticking out enough to catch the lock washer. Then I went ahead and put all the front pieces on. And then from that point, I tightened that front nut. And that got me pretty close where the gap was a little too big. But you saw that it didn't take much after that to turn where I just held this front nut. And because I needed to tighten it, tighten up the gap, I turned the big nut a little. And then without taking the wrench off after I turned it, the big nut, I tightened back up the front nut. You can't check this gap without the front nut and the outer nut being tight to each other. You can't, there's no reason in the world to even check the gap until this nut and the front nut are tight because that's what sets the, the actual position. If you're checking gaps, by only turning the adjuster nut, you're doing it wrong. You're never going to, you're going to only get lucky maybe. And then if you just partially tighten the front nut, you're doing that wrong as well. So hopefully that, that covers everything on there. This one will, will rub a little for a while and turn with the engine. But with the belt on it right now, you know, in a mower deck, it wouldn't turn it it would just barely touch and with a, a new disc and everything i'm gonna leave it a little tight because it turns and rubs just slightly but that's it hopefully you understand the easy adjust clutch and never get frustrated with it again because you saw how i made it look easy and it is once you know. But, you know, when you don't know, you don't know. So, yeah, it can be frustrating because you're thinking that this is your final nut that you tighten or something. And then when you tighten it, then the adjustment gets all screwed up again because you didn't actually have the travel nut where it needed to be. You know, whatever. When you're not familiar, you're just not familiar. So, there you go.